Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a pair of Super 35 cinema zoom lenses that very well may be the best budget cinema lenses on the market today. We're talking about the DZO Film 50 to 125 T2.8 and its sidekick, the 20 to 55. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Joe and I own a video production company by the name of Driven Films, where I film primarily for the automotive industry. On this channel, I share my passion of camera gear with you guys and bring you honest, unbiased, and to the point reviews of the camera gear that I use out in the field. Now, if that's something that you're into, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now, before we get to the nitty gritty, I want to state that DZO did not send me these lenses. They are not paying me for this review. There was no money exchanged. Actually, there was some money exchanged. I rented these lenses with my own money to use them and test them out on a few gigs. So what you're going to get here is an unbiased, honest review and some non-scientific tests, plus some example footage that I shot with both of these lenses. So with that out of the way, we're going to talk about some general specs and just talk about what you can expect when you use these lenses. Now, first things first here, DZO designed and built these lenses from the ground up. What that means is you're not getting a set of lenses that are simply rehoused photo lenses. You're getting a pair of cinema lenses that were designed with cinema lens specs and standards in mind. So again, these are not rehoused photo lenses. Both of these lenses cover a Super 35 image circle, making them a great option for a Super 35 camera like the Zcam E2S6 here. Alternatively, you can use them with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, the 6K Pro, the Red Komodo, or the Canon C70, or just about any Super 35 camera. Both of these lenses are parfocal lenses. Now what parfocal means is that once you set your focus and then you adjust your zoom, whether in or out, you are not going to lose focus. Now, the more I shoot on parfocal lenses, the more I've come to appreciate that simple fact that you are not having to refocus every time you adjust zoom. That makes them very, very valuable for shooting in run and gun situations. Both lenses range from T2.8 to T22 and have a constant maximum aperture. Now, in terms of weight and length, the 20 to 55 comes in at 3.35 pounds and 6.46 inches in length. And the 50 to 125 comes in a little bit heavier and longer at 3.75 pounds and 6.89 inches in length. Now, based on lenses that I've used in the past, I did find the DZO Pictor Film Zoom lenses to be a little bit on the long side. However, they were surprisingly lightweight given their length. I was able to balance the Zcam E2S6 with the 20 to 55 on my Movi Pro without much of a problem whatsoever. All I had to do was add some counterweights with the Cinemil dovetail plate. When it comes to build quality, the DZO Film Pictor zooms are surprisingly well built. You get the all metal build with very smooth and very precise focus iris and zoom rings, as well as 95 millimeter outer diameters for accepting matte boxes and an 86 millimeter filter thread to accept screw on filters. Now that's something that I've mentioned in the past is that not all cinema lenses have screw on filters. It's something that we're starting to see more and more of and that's something that I really, really appreciate considering that I have invested quite a bit into circular filters as well as the 4x5.65 filters you'd use in a matte box. Now in terms of build quality, I do wanna mention that the lens caps they do pop off when in camera bag. It's happened several times, so it's not a fluke, but when the lens is in the camera bag and I pull it out, the lens cap is often coming off with it. It's not too big of a deal, but it's something to take note of. 
Now in terms of the focus iris and zoom rings, the focus ring has a 270 degree rotation, making for very, very smooth focus pulls. The zoom ring has a 100 degree rotation and you could add this optional pin here, which allows you to quickly and easily grab onto the pin and adjust your zoom. The iris ring has a 65 degree rotation, again, making for very smooth iris pulls. In terms of the gears, you have the standard 0.8 mod pitch gears, which accepts standard follow focus and fizz motors. One big plus here is that on both lenses, the gearing is in the exact same position from the lens mount back. That means that when you are using a triple motor setup or double motor setup, whatever it may be, means that you don't have to change the motor position when you swap lenses. On both lenses, focus markings are in imperial and metric and are on both sides of the lens, making it easy for camera operator and AC to operate these lenses. One thing that I noticed is that on the 50 to 125, the distance markings on the zoom ring are a bit close together, making it a little bit hard to decipher exactly where you're at if you are moving quickly. Something that we're starting to see more of from lens manufacturers is user interchangeable or hybrid lens mounts. For example, the SLR Magic APO Hyper Prime has a hybrid EF and PL mount, and the Tokina ATX series has user interchangeable mounts. Now DZO has taken note of this and given us EF and PL mounts in the box when you purchase these lenses. You don't have to pay anything extra, they come with the lenses for free. So if you have multiple camera systems that use those two mounts, you are in luck and you don't have to purchase additional mounts. Now to aid in the swapping of these lens mounts, both lenses come with a set of shims, a shim case and tools, which helps to make swapping these lens mounts easier. Now, speaking of lens mounts, it's important to note that these lenses cannot be used on a Metabones speed booster. So that means that anyone who's using a micro four thirds camera system, like a Blackmagic Pocket 4K or a GH5, GH5S, you are kind of out of luck seeing as you cannot mount these lenses on a speed booster without risking damage to both the speed booster and the lens. So you are out of luck there when it comes to using the Pictor zooms. However, DZO does have a line of micro four thirds specific lenses for you if you are on a micro four thirds system. In terms of pricing, the 50 to 125 comes in at $2,489. The 20 to 55 comes in at $2,289. You could purchase both of these in a set with a hard case for $4,799. Now onto what you guys have all been waiting for, and that is the characteristics of these lenses. Now, before we go any further, I want to remind you that these are not scientific lens tests. These are simply tests that I've done based on my experience of shooting with these lenses for a couple of gigs, and I'm just providing my just overall opinion of what I've seen based on the footage I've shot. Now, I would definitely consider these lenses to be a little bit more on the artsy side. Not so much artsy that they look like vintage lenses, but no one can accuse these lenses of being clinical. When it comes to the bokeh, you can expect very round bokeh throughout the aperture range for a very consistent look across both of the lenses. Now, some might refer to the bokeh as having a very creamy characteristic, but I'd just say that they look very pleasing to the eye. In terms of sharpness, when shooting wide open, both lenses handle the center of the lens very well, but towards the outer portion of the frame, there is a noticeable drop off in sharpness. Corners aren't very sharp until you start to stop down, but chromatic aberration is kept to a minimum, and both lenses are very consistent, so naturally they make quite a team. When it comes to flaring, the Pictor zooms give soft flares and are consistent across both lenses. Now, the one thing that many of you may be asking is, how do these lenses handle focus breathing? Now, I am used to marketing terms and I am used to brands claiming things and honestly not delivering on them, but when DZO says that there is very little minimal focus breathing, they have delivered. Thanks to the floating elements on these lenses, there is very little, almost no noticeable focus breathing. So if you are looking for a set of zooms that have minimal to no focus breathing, the DZO Film Pictor zooms are gonna be the ones for you. And I'll be honest with you, I was very surprised considering how affordable these lenses are, especially compared to some of the more expensive competition on the market.
So to wrap it up, we're gonna talk about the pros of these lenses. And first up is the value. Coming in at just under 5,000, you are getting two of the best lenses on the market when it comes to cinema zooms. I don't know of any other lenses out there right now that even come close to the overall quality and value at just under $5,000. Another huge pro is that the build quality is pretty good for the price that you're paying for these lenses. You're getting the all metal build, you're getting the included lens supports, you're getting the very smooth focus iris and zoom rings, and overall, I think you're getting a good bang for your buck when it comes to the quality of these lenses. Furthering the value, you do get the EF and PL lens mounts, which to me makes for a very appealing purchase considering that the camera bodies do change. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, you will be changing camera bodies pretty often, especially the way the market's going right now. But lenses, on the other hand, can stick with you for several, several years. So I invest in my lenses more so than my camera bodies and having the ability to change my lens mounts is a very, very big addition. And I'm incredibly happy that more lens manufacturers like DZO are doing that. The next pro is that these lenses are par focal. Again, the fact that you don't have to change your focus when you change your zoom is a big plus for run and gun style shooters like myself. So par focal, boom, huge plus. The next pro is that DZO has delivered on their claim of minimal to no focus breathing. For anyone who doesn't like the focus breathing of other lenses on the market, you are definitely going to be very surprised and very happy with the minimal focus breathing on the DZO Pictor lenses. The next pro to consider here is that you get an awesome amount of coverage with just two lenses. You get your wides and your mediums with the 20 to 55, and then you have your telephoto with the 50 to 125, making this a very good combination for anyone who wants to travel light and just carry two lenses with them. When it comes to matching and consistency, the DZO Pictor Film Zoom lenses are what I consider the dynamic duo of budget cinema lenses. <laughs> Simply put, the DZO Film Pictor zoom lenses are incredibly consistent and match very well with each other. Now we can't talk about the pros if we don't talk about the cons. And to be honest with you, I did have to find some nitpicking here. I had to kind of dig deep to find some things that I didn't like about these lenses. And the first one being is that they are a little bit long, especially the 20 to 55. I did find that this lens didn't need to necessarily be this long. However, I'm sure that DZO had a reason for it based on the internal workings of this lens. Now, when you compare the telephoto to something like the Tokina 50 to 135, which you get more focal length out of it and it does have a little bit of breathing, However, it is a much shorter lens than the 50 to 125. So that's just a little bit of nitpicking here. And then continuing on the nitpicking was that the lens cap kept coming off. I wasn't a big fan of that. And honestly, furthering the nitpicking is that I think that DZO went a little bit overboard when it came to the branding. I don't need my lens to remind me to go make my movie. And to be honest with you, I think that they could have been a little tiny bit more subtle when it came to the branding, but that's just branding, it's not a big deal. What your camera gear looks like really doesn't matter. In the end, the only thing that matters is what is coming out of the camera and what's coming out of the lens or actually going into the lens and then coming out of the camera, whatever you wanna say. Now my last con, and I think it's a very reasonable and valid complaint, is that these lenses do not work with the Metabone Speed Booster for the Micro Four Thirds camera system. So anyone with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, GH5S, or any other Micro Four Thirds camera, you are out of luck here. You will not be able to use these lenses with a Metabone Speed Booster. Hopefully Metabones does come out with something or some sort of solution, some sort of adapter that will allow us to use these lenses with the Micro Four Thirds camera system. So when it's all said and done, what we end up with here is two very well-designed, well-priced and well-matched cinema zoom lenses that in my opinion are the best budget-friendly cinema lenses on the market today. Now the final verdict here is that for the money, I don't think you can beat the DZO Pictor zoom combo. Or for that matter, even independently, these lenses are some of the best I've ever shot on. And I think that the footage looks great and has a bit of character without looking too overdone and just too artsy in my opinion. Now, if you like what you've seen so far in this review and you wanna try these lenses out for yourself, 
You could do so by renting them from lensrentals.com by clicking on the link down in the description below. Now, don't forget to use coupon code DRIVENFILMS15 at checkout to get 15% off of your entire rental from lensrentals.com. Now, if you wanna take my word for it, you can go ahead and purchase these outright. I'm gonna put a link to both of these lenses and the kit down in the description below. So guys, that wraps it up for the review on the DZO Film Pictor Zoom Lenses. Do me a favor, let me know what lenses you want me to review next down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to bring you guys a review of those as soon as possible. Also, if you learned something from this video and you found it informative, please give it the old thumbs up and share it on social media. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Until next time, take care.